Hello, everyone. How are you? So thank you so much, by the way, for coming. Oops, sorry, I shouldn't touch this. Thank you so much, by the way, for coming. I know lunch just happened. And hi to everyone on the live stream. I know this is being live streamed, so thank you so much for coming. Uh, today is Halloween. I love seeing everyone's costumes. <laughs> now, my name is Kyle. I am a web developer at Tinder. And right now, I live in Los Angeles, but I'm no stranger to the Bay. Um, as Peggy said, I used to live out here. Um, I got my CS degree at UC Berkeley. Uh, go Bears! <laughs> uh, it feels so good to be home. Thank you. Uh, so after UC Berkeley, I moved down to LA, and I eventually found my way here at Tinder. And I've only been at Tinder for about a year now, uh, so I can remember my first day just like it was yesterday, actually. Uh, my boss, his name's Eric. Eric pulled me aside and said, Kyle, come with me. And I followed him, and I was like, oh my god, I'm going to learn all of Tinder's deepest, darkest secrets. <laughs> you know, like the first day, EBGBs. And he told me, Kyle, you're going to be working on a WordPress blog named Swipe Life. And immediately, I think my face went flush. I was like, oh my god, WordPress? <laughs> I've never used WordPress. My interview was like the week before I was coding in React and, and not PHP, and I was like freaking out just a little bit um, because PHP wasn't my strong point. And uh, I think he saw this worry on my face, and he said, no, 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 it's OK. Uh, I mean, our writers were going to be working in WordPress. However, our engineers are going to be working in React. And I'm like, OK. That made me feel a lot better. Um, the architecture was chosen very explicitly. Our writers will be working in WordPress. Uh, and we chose that on purpose because writers love using WordPress a lot of the times. Uh, WordPress is made for writers, by writers, so that sometimes they could even create a blog without engineers, right? Uh, chances are a lot of the gigs that, that writers write in often use WordPress. So we want to make sure that we can empower our writers to, to get their job done efficiently and effectively so we could have a great blog. Um, also, however, we wanted our engineers to be able to use React. Because for us at Tinder, we love using React. We have a lot of projects already in React. Our build ecosystem is in React. Um, so we can just basically plug and play if we had one more project using React. Um, but using WordPress and React at the same time, I was kind of confused at how we would do that. <laughs> Rightfully so, right? I mean, it would be super cool if there was some sort of bridge between our React app and WordPress. And, uh, by the way, this is not a new paradigm. This is a paradigm actually already exists today, and uh, I think it's very topical today, Halloween. It's called headless CMS. Um, not as scary as a headless horseman, and definitely not as scary as headless branches. Uh, headless CMSs are actually the cool kind of headless CMS. Um, all it really means is that we'll have a content management system, such as WordPress, such as, as Ghost, and uh, all, it's, all it's going to do, its main job, is to display is to uh, store this content. It'll be a home where writers can create this content. And it'll be doing everything except for displaying the content, OK? Um, we'll leave that up to some sort of front-end client, such as React, iOS, uh, Android, for example. So this is what a headless CMS is. So I left that meeting with Eric kind of like, gosh, that's going to be tough, creating a headless CMS uh, of some sort. How are we going to do it? And I got all my permissions on that first day. I pulled in the repo, and I kind of peeked behind the curtain to see what was going on. And here's what I saw. I saw we were using a tool called Gatsby. And I, I know I hate doing this like when I'm in the audience, but can everyone show me a raise of hands? Who here has heard of Gatsby? And for those of you on the live stream, it was a good 75% of folks raised their hand. And that's really cool, because Gatsby is one of these new tools on the block that a lot of people have heard of. Um, it hasn't really hit the point where everyone's heard of it, but it's pretty new. It's picking up pace. And what it is is a static website generator. At the end of the day, you'll get a brand new static website. Super cool. But this is kind of like an understatement, because Gatsby does so much more than this. Gatsby will kind of be our sidekick. And uh, it will actually act for us in Swipe Life as our bridge, connecting our React app and our WordPress project. And so for the rest of this talk, I'll be discussing how we use Gatsby and uh, what a headless CMS is, the pros and the cons. 
and we'll go from there, okay? Everyone ready? Very excited? <laughs> In the words of Apollo, like, let's blast off. <laughs> so the first thing that we need to do to use Gatsby is run the command uh, yarn global add Gatsby CLI, or you could use NPM too if you want, whatever floats your boat, you know? But um, once you have the Gatsby CLI installed, we can run this command Gatsby new. And what Gatsby new does is it creates a brand new Gatsby project for you. And if the word Gatsby project gives you the eebie-jeebies, no worries, it's okay. Uh, what Gatsby project really means is it's just a React app with some Gatsby config to it. Um, and that's for all its intents and purposes, I feel like that's a good way to kind of introduce folks to Gatsby. Um, let's open up one of those Gatsby files. So first we're gonna have to change the directory and then open up Gatsby config. So in Gatsby config, you'll already see that it's pre-populated with a lot of configurations and things called plugins. Plugins are really cool. They're, they're packages that extend your Gatsby app and you'll have a list already there for you. We're gonna use a very special one. It's called Gatsby Source WordPress, okay? And what Gatsby Source WordPress does is it tells Gatsby, hey, Gatsby, you're gonna act as this bridge between this React app and a specific WordPress instance. And for us here, I put one in the base URL option called my.wordpress.com. That's where you'd put your WordPress instance URL, okay? And of course, these, these are packages, so they could be installed in, with NPM or Yarn. And once we do that, our configuration is done, and we are able to run Gatsby Build. Now, Gatsby Build does a lot, and it likes to tell you that it does a lot because the output on your terminal is humongous. Like, if you run it in Starbucks, you're gonna be thinking you're hacking the Wi-Fi. Uh, so for the rest of, <laughs> for the next few slides, what we're going to do is explain what does Gatsby Build do. It does a few big steps, and hopefully when you run Gatsby Build and you see all this output, you'll be like, ah, I know what it's doing. So the first thing that it does is Gatsby is going to crawl your WordPress API. It's gonna hit every single endpoint and grab that information. So not many, uh, sorry, I didn't know this before I started. Uh, WordPress actually has API endpoints out of the box. So if you go to this path, slash posts, you'll see all of your public posts in JSON format. And if you go to slash tags or slash categories, you'll see all your tags or categories in a JSON. Uh, so what Gatsby will do is it'll hit every single one of these endpoints. It'll take all of that information and it will store it inside of a GraphQL service. It'll be like, uh, I want it, I got it. You know, it's like Ariana Grande. <laughs> you like my posts? Gee, thanks, just got it. Just fetched it. <laughs> um, so it'll store it inside of a GraphQL service, which, by the way, is why we're here today, because Gatsby employs GraphQL in some very, I like to call it creative ways, uh, to, to basically uh, create blogs or create static websites. And we'll see some examples of some GraphQL queries and how we can employ GraphQL queries to really make a powerful static website. So anyway, GraphQL took all of the WordPress data that it could and stuffed it into a GraphQL service. And once it's done with that, our React app can peer inside of that GraphQL service, take the results that it needs, take the data that it needs, and pass it to itself via props, okay? So, Let's take a look at how that works. These will be like smart components, if you will. Um, this is what the post component that you just saw looked like. So it's very simple. You can see here we're just displaying a title and the content of a WordPress post. And it's coming from an object that was passed in via props called data. And for all intents and purposes, this is our WordPress data. This is from uh, this GraphQL query here that we're going to execute. This is in the same file for us. Um, what we're doing here is we're grabbing a very specific WordPress post, given a specific ID, and we're only grabbing the title and the content fields. We could grab other things too, like metadata, tags, authors, but for this purpose, we're just going to grab the title and the content. And what GraphQL will do when you run the build is it will execute every single one of these GraphQL queries. It will take those results and then pass those results to the components that need them. And at the end of the day, you're gonna have a huge React app. Uh, especially if you're as big as Swipe Life. As time goes on, this app is gonna get bigger and bigger. And what Gatsby will do is chop it up into a bunch of small HTML and JavaScript files, and you will have a static website that you can, I don't know, do whatever you want with it. You can put it to AdBuns on S3, Google Cloud. You know, you'll have a serverless website. You could have a serverless website too at the end of the day. Anyway, so we just did a lot in the last five slides. <laughs> I'm gonna take a breath. 
And uh, let's take a third eye view at what we just did. What Gatsby did was covered all of your API endpoints, went to every single one, grabbed the information from your WordPress, stuffed into a GraphQL instance where your GraphQL, where your React components grab that information from and pass it to themselves via props. And at the end of the day, we have a blog that we wrote in React without any, using any PHP. So that, I think, is super powerful, and that's what got me really excited about Gatsby at the end of the day. Um, so knowing that, this actually made my first few days at work a lot easier. And so we put our heads down for the next few weeks, and we worked. Uh, yes, or anyone else watch RuPaul here? A, one, two, <laughs> three. <laughs> and uh, on October 1st, 2018, we went live with Swipe Life. And so that means we're just one year old now, which is crazy to think about. Uh, what Swipe Life is, is a dating blog. We talk about everything and anything dating, uh, where to go on your first date, uh, what to do if you are on a bad first date, um, and also like what to do if someone's ghosting you, which I kind of thought about today. I'm like, this is the perfect word for today on Halloween, ghosting. Um, actually, there was a post that went out yesterday that was like a whole bunch of cool Halloween pickup lines. Uh, do you want to hear one? <laughs> so one of them was, hey, are you a ghost? Because I want you to be my boo. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Uh, huge shout out to our writing team out in New York. They do an awesome job. Um, anyway. So um, I wanted to show you some of the content that we have on Swipe Life. We don't just do articles. We also do video content. For example, JLo came in one time and helped our users navigate the online dating scene. Uh, this is one of my favorite clips. They are uh, Jonathan Van Ness and Antonio from Queer Eye who came in, and they were basically critiquing bad dating advice. Um, and this will give you a little taste of like, how edgy and progressive our content is. It's really fun. Uh, the Gen Z community absolutely loves it. Um, but take a look. Do some makeup, but don't go over the top. Touch up your roots, blow dry your hair, instead of ironing them poker straight. If a man ever had the nerve to turn me down based off of the volume or lack thereof in my hair, I wish he would. Get some spanks or shapewear that makes you look more shapely in pictures. Wear some heels, because even if it's a portrait where you're just seen this much, when you wear heels, your weight goes on your toes and it kind of elongates your whole body even for a close-up. Look straight into the camera. When somebody's looking at your picture, it gives a feeling that you're looking straight into someone's eyes. The last one was right. Everything else about before that, like if you want a miserable relationship, I listen to what attacked. she said. No, that was outrageous. <laughs> that was a lot. That was, I mean, that was like Tinder in 1943. It's like, make sure your slippers are by the front door for him right. and make sure you don't talk too much. <laughs> make sure that you don't look really questions. shapely. What if you're shaped like a rectangle? Embrace the rectangle. She did hit the nail on the head with the photos, but up until then it was all wrong. <laughs> so that's like a quick taste of the kind of content that we have. So yes, the dating community generates a lot of buzz about this content. Um, but something really special that I want to share with you all is what the tech community says. Uh, TechCrunch has written some articles on Swipe Life, and one of the aspects of tech that I love to show everyone, you can laugh, it's okay, but the, the Google Chrome audit, I love showing people the Google Chrome audit or the Lighthouse audit of Swipe Life because it's one of those things, it's like a report card. Um, it tells you where you could do well, where you're doing well on, where you could do better, and just like a report card, it's not something that you can change overnight. Um, these numbers take a lot of work to get up to the 90s and 100s. And when we went live, <laughs> this is what we saw. Um, we got 100 on best practice in SEO. We were a progressive web app, uh, which is thanks to a plugin called Gatsby Plugin Offline. Um, we got a high accessibility score, but my favorite one is performance. Because traditionally for me, getting that performance number even above a 75 is so hard. <laughs> like, yes, I can minify my JavaScript. Yes, I can minify my styles. But knowing what to defer, how to lazy load, uh, that is an art. It's not really too much of a science anymore. Uh, and I really appreciate people who could get high performance because that means your website's more accessible to folks all over the world. So how did we do it? It was thanks to a lot of tools from Gatsby. And I'm going to show you all two that Gatsby gives us for free out of the box. And the first one is called Gatsby Image. And what Gatsby Image does is it takes all of your images 
And for us at Swipe Life, that means it's our WordPress images, and it optimizes them. It optimizes them for desktop, mobile, tablet, all on build time. And it doesn't stop there. On runtime, it does not fetch all of your images when a user hits your URL. It only fetches the ones that are in the viewport. And as a user scrolls, that's when Gatsby image will fetch them, and then it will render them with a blur in effect. So it doesn't cause a bad, janky UI. And uh, I have a video here to show how this works. Um, I slowed down the internet, by the way, on this to slow LTE so you could see this blur in effect. On fast Wi-Fi, you actually don't even really see it too much. Um, but as you can see, as I refresh or scroll, these images will be loaded in in real time. So this will make your time to interactive that much faster. Especially, oh, there's Antonio and, and JVN. <laughs> um, so that's Gatsby image. The second one I think is even cooler. It's a little bit more innovative even. It's called Gatsby Link. And what Gatsby Link does is it follows your user's cursor on runtime, obviously. It follows your user's cursor. And as the user's cursor hits a bounding box around the user, around an uh, a internal URL, what Gatsby will do is it will prefetch the resources that the user will need if they were to click on that URL. So when they do click on it, a lot of the resources are already fetched and already there. So I want to give a quick example. I'll open up the Google Chrome tools, the network tab, to show you. So notice as my cursor is hovering over URLs, more and more network calls are being made. These are the prefetches. And it's really freaky. Like someone yesterday I was explaining this to said, it almost feels like the website's broken because you click it and the website just immediately shows up. It's almost like you have to add a fake loading in there. <laughs> you know? But um, anyway, thanks to Gatsby Image and Gatsby Link, we got our performance score to a 98. And yes, there's always work that we can do, but these are two things that you get out of the box with Gatsby that save us a lot of time. Uh, so, like I said, it's much more than a static website generator. <laughs> so, um, Swipe Life has been out for about a year now, and if you wanna check it out, feel free to go to our WordPress-driven site where engineers and code in PHP, but in React instead, at swipelife.tinder.com. Now, also, I want to give a huge shout out to everyone that worked on this. We have a content creation team out in New York who does an amazing job. They write two articles a day, even on weekends. And I want to give a huge shout out to all of the engineers who worked on this. Uh, we have engineers in our offices in Palo Alto in Los Angeles who did a magnificent job creating this and keeping it up. So I want to give a thanks to everyone. Um, now, before I go, I want to share one personal story, if that's OK. Um, this came out in October of 2018. A few months later, it was in June 2019 uh, of this year, there was like an earthquake in Ohio. It was like really small, but I'm like, an earthquake in Ohio, what? <laughs> like, I'm so used to the ones in California. And then there was like a lot of flooding in New York. And I was reading this local news article on like one of those local news websites. And while I was reading it, the website turned into a, like, turned into a succulent. And it was really weird, like as weird as that sounds, like the website, psh, succulent. And I'm like, okay, weird flex, but okay, let's go to a different website. And I went to a different news website, and that too was already a succulent. I went to 9to5Mac, succulent, TechCrunch, succulent. And I'm like, what on earth is going on here, you guys? <laughs> like I thought it, my computer might have been hacked with like a weird virus, same thing on my phone. And I went to Twitter to find out what was going on. And uh, Kyle Frost said it best. He said, today's a, today's a big day for succulents. <laughs> Hashtag WordPress. <laughs> for anyone who's created a, a WordPress blog recently, like a Greenfield WordPress blog, knows what this is. This is the, uh, the default theme that you get when you create a WordPress site. And what actually happened was there was a WordPress outage. And WordPress reverted, reverted everyone's premium blogs <laughs> with images of succulents. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And, this, mind you guys, was right before my mid-year review, June. Mid-year review was in July, and I'm freaking out. <laughs> I ran over to Swipe Life to find out, okay, this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a great day. Um, I, and it kind of was, this is what I saw. Um, there were no succulents. We survived the succulent apocalypse, you guys. <laughs> and what ended up happening? Like, why did we survive? Were we like, were we like the chosen ones, or what? Um, this is like my, my little diagram to show what happened. WordPress was actually down for us. Um, our writers, they couldn't write. Our editors, they couldn't edit. Like no new content creation could be made, okay? Uh, and that sucked. That, that was really sad. However, our React app was still up. 
uh, our React app is independent of WordPress on runtime. And now, for those of you keeping score, you're like, but Kyle, you said it covered, like, you scraped your WordPress like Ariana Grande. What's going on here? That's during build time. So every time you build uh, a Gatsby app, it will make all of those API calls. But after that, it's fully independent. Your React app during runtime is independent of your WordPress app. It doesn't need WordPress. So whenever your users go to your, your React app after the build is done when in runtime, it doesn't make API calls to WordPress. So they could go to swipelife.tinder.com, and they'll see it. Everything's good. Uh, and we don't depend on the WordPress themes anymore either. So that's why we survived the, uh, the succulent apocalypse. So as you can imagine, I sat down that day with like like a big sigh of relief, and I sent everyone a Slack message, and was like, hey, everyone, this is what's happening in the WordPress community right now, and we survived, thanks to Sadler CMSs and how we use Gatsby. So that was a happy day. <laughs> and I want to leave everyone with this. Um, by the way, this is my last slide, but I have a few more minutes, I want, a few more things I wanted to say. Um, first off, I want to say thank you so much for coming. Um, I do have a surprise for everyone who is searching for a job right now, who is in San Francisco. Um, we do have offices in Los Angeles and Palo Alto, but if you live here in SF, I totally understand that that could be a hell of a commute, you know? So um, we actually just opened an office two weeks ago out here in San Francisco, like literally right next door. So if you are looking for a job and you do live out here, feel free to send me your resume. My email is kyle.boss at gotinder.com. Um, we'd love to have you, and let's see if we're a match. And if you want to, uh, if you want, eh, you get it, <laughs> we're a match. Um, if you also want to check out my, my Twitter, like a Kyle Boss, I'm giving some more talks in the future. Uh, feel free to say hi, and have, if you have any questions, my inbox is always open. Feel free to slide into my DMs, okay? And um, I want to leave everyone with one more thing. If you liked what you saw here today, um, don't leave this information here at the conference, because here at the Swipe Life team, I feel like all of the folks that worked on Swipe Life were empowered. Our writers were empowered to get their job done efficiently and effectively because we gave them the tools that they are comfortable with and that are made for them. Also, our engineers felt the same way because we got to use React. We didn't use something that we weren't too entirely familiar with, such as PHP. So if you have a blog coming your way at your job, don't leave this information here at the conference. Take it with you. Talk to your team. Tell them about headless CMSs. Tell them about Gatsby. Because the amount of resources and money you save, especially time, that's the most important for me, is priceless. So thank you, everyone.